Uh, okay, so today we will study, you know, chapter 8 about stock valuations. So this is a new chapter after we study the bond. Right? So before the uh, formal lectures, let me show you something about recent data of the coronavirus 2019, COVID-19. Right? You can see uh, until today, right, March 23 until 5 p.m., the total case confirmed in the, US, uh, in the New York City is around 13,119 patients. Right? And uh, if you look at the detail of the demographic big data for this confirmed case, right? you can see the age group in the table here, right? So almost half of the uh, patients, the age actually uh, younger than what, than 45 years old, right? 49%, right? So I hope you guys can be very cautious, right? So if you don't have anything emotion, please stay at home. Right, and reduce the social uh, exposure, right? So, you know, at the very beginning, right, most people believe, you know, the COVID-19 is only dangerous, right, to the people with old age, right, with something, you know, with some uh, underlying disease. However, according to the data, right, for a confirmed case, almost half people, right, in a uh, hospital now is younger than 45 years old, right? So please stay at home, right? And reduce the traveling and the contact with the uh, people outside. So today we will study the stock market, right? And uh, if you have been to the Wall Street, right? You know the stock is the most popular product, right? In the financial market, right? Many individuals and uh, company and institutions are holding the stock, right? And uh, if you want to buy the stock, you can play a bid offer, a right? bid or asking offer, right? So in the trading market, right? And uh, there are high volume of the stock, right? Trading every day. So do you know what's the what actually are stocks, right? Uh, stock just a piece of paper. Or is anything you know very meaningful if you're holding a stock, right? Let me show you this uh, video, right? A stock is a share of the ownership of a company. As the owner of a stock, the stockholder, you have a claim on the company's assets and earnings. Suppose Steve is starting a company, Pies R Us. He needs $100,000, but doesn't want to borrow from a bank. Instead, Steve invests $10,000 of his own money and finds nine other investors who are willing to invest $10,000 each. In return, he gives each investor a certificate that represents 10% of his company. Each certificate represents 10% of the company's assets, the building, the pie pans, and the baking materials, and 10% of any future earnings. After one year, the company is doing well, and the company's total value increases to $200,000. This means each share of the company is now worth $20,000, $200,000 divided by 10 shares. That's twice the original $10,000. The original investors can sell their stock in the company to other investors for a 100% profit. This is how stocks work. Stocks are bought and sold daily on the major exchanges. Okay, so you can see from this video, you can tell, right? The common stock represents the ownership of the company, right? So if you bought the stock, means you actually the owner of the company, right? Not the CEO is the actual owner, right? But the stockholder or the shareholder is the company's real holders. Right. So we mentioned in class, right? So we have the balance sheet. Left column is the what is the assets, right? The right column is what? Is the liabilities plus the shareholders' equity. Right. So the shareholders' equity, right? The part of the shareholders' equity is the common stock, right? So if you're holding a common stock, you actually hold the company's what? 
not worse, right? Not worse, right? So you can claim the residual income of the company if you hold the stock, right, in your account. So if the company make a profit, right, they can reward shareholders by right, use what use the dividends, by right, use the dividends. So here's another case, right, for the what, for the meaning of the stock, right? So basically, if you earn a business, right, and you want to raise the money from the public, right, most company want to what raise the stock, right? by selling the stock into the public, by right, using the IPO, initial public offering, so we can, you know, raise many money, by right, from the public, right, to support our expansion and running the business. Okay. Stocks Made Easy, presented by WallStreetSurvivor.com. This is Julie. She lives in Paris. Julie is known for her delicious croissants. She started baking when she was a little girl, and ever since it has been her dream to open a bakery of her very own and supply the city with her wonderful croissants. She figures that it will cost her $100,000 to start her business with all of the supplies, staff, and costs of starting a business. The problem is Julie only has $10,000 to put into her company. She definitely can't build her business properly on $10,000. What is Julie to do? Julie decides to issue stock to investors to help raise money. Stocks are pieces or shares of ownership of a company. Each share is worth a certain amount based on what the company is worth. Companies issue shares to investors in order to raise money. Because she is $90,000 short, Julie decides to get nine of her friends to invest in the remaining balance. However, to do this, Julie must give up 90% of her company in shares. Now Julie and her friends each own 10% of her company. Five years later, Julie's bakery is booming. She has turned her bakery into one of the biggest in Paris. Her company is now worth $1 million. Julie got the money she needed to create her business without acquiring additional risk or debt. Also, Julie and her nine friends each turned their $10,000 investment into $100,000. Just like Julie's friends bought shares in her company, you can also buy shares of publicly traded companies like Apple or Walmart. If Apple has 100 shares and you bought one share, you would own 1% of Apple. To learn more about the stock market, so I will halt the video here, right? You can check the videos on YouTube for more details, but right? you can see here, right? So the Apple issued 100 total shares, for example, right? If you're holding one share of these total shares, means you actually earn what? 1% of the company, right? So based on the proportion of your shares hold according to the total shares, right? You earn how much of the companies? Right, it's based on how much proportion you own the stock shares, right? Based on total shares available in the public, right? So you can see from the two videos, we actually explain how the company, right, raise the capital, use the stock, right? So why the company raise the stock, they want to use the equity as a financing source, right? They can use the long-term debt use the bond, right? Or they can choose what? They can choose the equities, right? By issue the stock, right? That's from the company's perspective. But from our individual investor's perspective, why we need to buy the stock, right? You can see recently, we, are, we have the market plumped very lower, right? So even lost than more than 20%, right? So why we need to buy the stock? You can see here, right? And this is graph I, you know, capture for the Morning Star, right? From the past 90 years, right? You can see, compared with the bond, treasury bills, and inflation, which one performing the best among these five group of assets is the stock, right? Stock, you can see, even after, you know, great recessions, right? The stock is bouncing back, right? Performing better than the bond and also, of course, beat inflation.
right? And you can see the very beginning, right? The levels is one dollars. For example, you inviting in the 1926 for one dollars, right? What's the value of this one dollars if you put the money in the stock market? Now should be more than thirty three thousand dollars. That's the power of what stock growth, right? With the long term, right? And uh, you can see our long term growth rate for a large stock right, is ten percent. Right? For a small stock, even better, twelve percent. Right? Our inflation right, in the past 90 years is about 3.4 percent right so if you take the inflation out right the real return for the small stock right 12 minus 3.4 about what for example about the 8 percent right so if we use the rule of the 72 right 72 over 8 right equal to what nine right so means every nine years right your balance will doubled right so you can say for the past 90 years right 90 over 9 right it equal to 10 right so means your account balance will increase by 2 raised to 10 times right so that's why your balance will be such a high number in the long term, right? If you hold in the stock for long term, right? Even for short term, we have the Great Depression, right? And we also have the, you know, financial, global financial crisis, right? In the 2008. However, for long term, the market is always what? Growing, right? Growing, right? So that's why we need to, you know, invest in the stock market for what? For long term, right? So you may wonder why the stock market can keep growing, right? Even we have the short term financial crisis, right? While well, long term, our markets keep growing because you know our stock market, the index, right, is not with the same company from old time to new time, right? Our new company always replaces the old company, right? For example, right, the GE used to, the general, right, electronic GE, right, used to be the largest company on the S&P 500 but you know now right there are many companies right has the market cap more than GE for example right Microsoft right Google right Amazon right all these companies actually emerged in the past what past 50, 20 years right so they replaced the old company right for example GE right so they will, you know, replace the old industries, right, and uh, put a new blood right into the market, right. So that's why the market continue growing very fast. But for a short term, we have what we have the up and down, right. So much risk. But if you can put money for long term, you can enjoy a what long term capital gain, right, for your investment for the stock market. So that's why you know the government try to encourage every individual and household right, to hold in our what retirement plan right Retirm retirement plan right, is based on our index right so most people will re retail right more than 30 years right so they can enjoy the what long-term gain right, from the stock market right now we actually experience a very you know different time windows right for the you know march because this year we have what covid 19 right so people got panic right that's why you can see the market right drop more than 10 percent right just for a few days right or even 20 percent right so market in the short term can be like uh what roller coaster right can be very risky right up and down very frequently right for example the last week right we can see the market already has what has more than four times melted down right the stock market hot in the middle right so basically there are 15 minutes meltdown right so it means this 15 minutes you cannot do any trading right because you know so many people try to sell off the shares right cause there are too much volatility of the market right so that's why that's a policy and if the price drop too much for the whole market right, it will be too risky then 
that will be you know trigger the halt right of the trading right in today trading will be halt right so you can see this um video right i download right from the last week's meltdown do when wall street is crashing is the one thing you're not allowed to do because of corona put your hands on your face yeah <laughs> So they spent all day yesterday like, oh no, my money, oh no, Corona, oh no, my money, oh no, Corona, ah, uh, Yeah, the big reasons why the market got very panicked because what? Because COVID-19, right? So you can see the numbers I showed at the very beginning, right? Growing very fast. It's exponential growth, right, for the past week. However, that's not just the one reason why cost the market down. We also see the what? The oil price dropped too much, right? Because the Saudi Arabia with the Russia, right? They have a price, you know, fighting, right? On a crude oil market, right? So oil price now is even cheaper than the water price, right? If you bought a spring water, right? You know, a bottle of water with the same, you know, volumes of the oil, right? Oil is even cheaper, right? It's not make any sense, right? Because they have a uh, what? The price, you know price war right for the oil right so if the oil is too cheap i right, can cause the market also collapse right sometimes and also mix with our panic of the covid 19 right so how whole market actually tumbled right tumbled since last week right we can expect in the whole market will be continue volatile right for this remaining of this year right and even you know, the presidential re-elections can cause in the market even more volatile right, in the remaining of this year. I hope market will get in better, right? If we can control, you know, the COVID-19, right? So people will get recovered, right? Number will be controlled, right? So we can return to normal lifestyles, right? But for today's class, I will not go to the detail of the stock market, right? I am expecting right in the next videos I will spend time to talk about stock market right we will also mention something about fundamental study and uh, you know tech technical studies right but for today's class I will focus on the pricing of the stocks so before we do the valuation of the common stock let's say the difference between the bond and stock right What's the difference between the bond and stock? In the last chapters, we study how to price in the bond. Right? We use our, you know, five keys on the financial calculators. Right? We use the future values. Right? It's the one thousand dollars. Right? And uh, we have the coupon amount as the payment. Right? Number of the pay, um, coupon payments is n. And our interest rate yield to maturities is iy. Right? We solve what? We solve the present values. That's the price of the bond on today's market, right? But now we will, will track the difference between the bond and stock. So we will look at the cash flows right, for these two financial assets to see what's the difference between these two financial assets right, to generate the cash flows for investors. What's the difference? From the firm's perspective, a bond is a long-term debt Right, so it's, it's on uh, what on red columns of what the balance sheet, right? We have the you know liabilities, right? We have the current liabilities, right? And we have the long-term debt. So bond is a long-term debt, right? But what is stock? Stock represent our what our ownership of the company, right? It's our shareholders' equity. So that's in the shareholders' equity. From the investor's perspective, right? The bond will get paid, and what? And the maturity date. Even you're not willing to, you know, to get paid. However, once the bond matured, right, means the company already paid all the coupon and what face value. So the bond will mature and will expire. It will be not effective on the market in, anymore. But how about stock? Stock will continue, right, forever. If you're not selling the stock, right? If you're holding the stock, the stock will be always effective, right? Only case if the stock will be not effective is the case when the company go to what? Go to bankruptcy, right? 
they, if they, you know, not listing the stock on the market anymore, then the stock will be not effective, right? However, we assuming the stock will be continuously, right, effective on the market forever. So let's say uh, the mix of the bond and the stock, right, in the following chapters, right, when we study the capital structures, right, we will study, you know, the mixture of the bond and the stock in the capital structures, right, in a later chapter, right. For now, we will only study the bond and the stock separately, right, we not, you know, try to combine these two together, right, we will study one by one, right. So last chapter, we study the bond, now we study the stock. Now we can see the cash flows from the bond, right? Bond is payward, pay the coupon payments, equal payment every word, every period. Then on maturities, right, the bondholder will receive a lump sum payment, right, it's a face value. But for the stock, stock pay dividend payments, right, forever. For the common stock, we have the common stock dividends, right? For the preferred stock, we receive what? Preferred dividends. And be careful, the coupon payments are fixed, right? It's already stated in the contract when you purchase the bond, right? So you got a fixed payment every period. But for stock, dividends can be different over time, right? For the, you know, for the infant company, right? One company is very young, right? Especially for the technology company, Right, they don't pay any dividends, right? Even you look at the company like the Amazon, right? They don't pay any dividends, right? Only for the company, they get, you know, very mature, right? They have a very established market, right? They will pay dividends, right? For example, like the, you know, Microsoft, right? And the Merck, right? These companies, right, pay the what? Pay the dividends, right? And also like the Disney, right? Coca-Cola, right? This company pay the dividends over time, right? And also like this, even for these companies, right? And beginning of their, you know, stage of their company, right? The growth stage, right? They don't pay the dividends, right? Zero dividends. Now after they have a, you know, good market, right? They have established business, right? They will pay uh, maybe a low growth, low growth rate dividends, right? For example, like 2%, dividends, right, growing every, you know, year, right, but once they have a, you know, very good market, right, they don't have too many competitors, right, they will pay, pay higher dividends, right, so dividends can be different over time, right, over time, right, so now you can see the cash flows even more clear, right, in these two cash flow chart. Right. The first chart is for the bond cash flows. Right. You see, we use the same notation for what? For the coupon. Right. Use capital C. Right. Because we have the equal payments every period. Right. But for the common stock, I put a subscript. Right. For each dividends. D. Right. D means dividends. Right. You can see the one, two, three. Right. Means for different time you actually can receive a different amount of what? Dividends, right? There's no responsibility for the company will pay the dividends, right? Even. They can choose the, how much they want to pay based on their, you know, residual income. And also you can say for the bond, they have a, what? They have a limited life, right? That's the maturity, right? Once the bond matured, right, it will not pay any dividends, oh sorry, they will not pay any coupon anymore, right, the comp company has the bond matured, right, but for the common stock, you can see the times is what, infinity, that right? means the dividends will be always paid if you're holding a stock, it will never expire. So please notice the difference, right, the C is a constant, a equal for the coupon payments, right, but our, you know, stock, right, our stock, right, has dividends, uh, what, are not equal, right, are not equal, right. 
right, are not equal, right? And also dividends will be paid forever. And also there's no lump sum payment for the stock, right? I mean, if you pay like hundred dollars right, for one stock, right? The companies make no guarantee they will pay the hundred dollars back, right? Even you know you hold a very good company stock, right? What you will receive is not the face value, right? Or the price you purchase stock, right? You will get a what dividends, right? Dividends payments, right? Not the price you purchase stock, right? The companies make no guarantee you can still sell the same stock, right? For the same price you purchased, right? The price can be higher if a company works well, right? But it can be also go to upset directions if the company performing poor, right? The stock price will going down, right? It's no guarantee you will sell the stock with the same price you purchased. Right? Now let's say how to evaluate a common stock, right? That's our task in the last chapter for the bond. It will be the same task, right? In this chapter, right, to evaluate a common stock. We have the same rules, right? We use this rule to evaluate any financial assets, right? What's our rules? Right? Keep this one in your mind, right? Bring all expected future earnings right into the PV. Right? That's our key, right? To evaluate any financial assets, not just for the bond, for stock, right? For any financial assets, generate future cash flows. We will discount all the future cash flows to time zero. Right, to solve the PV, right? it will be the price or the value of the financial assets on today's market. Right? So just keep these rules right, in your mind. Right? So if you see any questions for the financial asset valuations, we will bring what? We will bring the future cash flows right, into the time zero. Use our discounting rate. So let's do the, uh, some examples. Right? We're starting with the simple examples with only one period. Now we will add in more periods right, for our stock valuations. Right? So the first one is for the one period examples. Right? Means you holding the stock only for one period and you will sell the stock after one period. So do, during this one year, right, you will receive one dividend, and then you will receive the price you sell this stock after one year. For example, right, suppose you purchase a stock, and you expecting to receive what two dollar dividend right, in one year, and also you believe you can sell this stock for fourteen dollars at the time when you sold it. If you, you know, purchase this stock, you require has a return for 20% on this investment. What's the price you're willing to pay for this stock? You can see here, right? If you purchase stock, you can receive a what? $2 dividend. Also, after one year, you can sell the stock for what? For $14. Right, so basically in the future there are two cash flows, right? Once the dividends, once the price you sell the stock, right? Even we know we can hold in the stock right, forever, but in these examples, right, we assuming you sell the stock after one year. Okay, right? so that's the cash flows, uh, cash flow diagram. Right? We have the time zero and time one only for one period, right, models. So you can see we receive what, total $16, right, after one year, right? What's the price you're willing to pay on time zero? Well, you can discount, right, this two amount to what, to time zero to see how much you are willing to pay, right? So sixteen dollars over what? Over one plus twenty percent, right? You holding the stock only for one period, right? 
and so our discount rate, 1 plus discount rate only raised to the power 1, right, power 1, and only for 1 year, right, so 16 over 1.2, right, that's how much you're willing to pay on time 0, right, so the total amount will be what, 13.34 dollars, if you are rational investor, right, you are willing to pay $13.34 for this stock, right, and uh, you are expecting to receive $2 and $14 on time one, right, your expected returns 20%. That's for the one period model. If you want to use the financial calculators, right, you can also use our financial keys, right? So one year means n equal to one, right? 20% expiry return. That's your expiry return. That's your discount rate, right? If you don't put the money in a stock, right, you can get return from somewhere else, right? That's your cost, right? That's your discount rate, 20%. Your payment, right, is the dividend. That's two dollars, right? And also you got fourteen dollars back when you sell the stock, right? That's our future values. After you put these numbers in into the financial keys, right? You solve what? You solve the PV. PV equal to what? Thirteen point thirty four dollars, right? So that's how much you can solve, right? Based on our financial keys. The number is what? It's minus. Because you put future values, right, and the payment as positive, right, and then this one should be what? Should be minus, right? You pay the money at the first, you receive the money back in the future, right? Once outflows, once inflows, right? So that's why the directions of the sign will be different. Now we're adding one more period, right? We have a two period model, right? So you not decide to sell the stock in one year later, right? But you will continue to hold the stock for one more year. So you were holding the stock for what? For total two years, right? So after one year, you will get another payment of the dividends for what? $2.1. And also the stock can sell for what? $14.7 at the end of what? Second year. How much you willing to pay? Right, so we can plot our cash flow diagram by right, within what within the two total two years. Right, on the first year you receive what two dollar dividends. Right, on the second year you receive what two point one dollars. And you not holding the stock for the continual period. Right, even you can do that. Right, you don't holding that anymore. Right, you sell the stock for what. 14.7 dollars right so how to solve the price of the stock on time zero right we will do what we will solve the price and values right to discount these two cash flows right to time zero right so two divided by one plus r and for these two they are on the same time they both on the time two, we can combine these two together, right? So 2.10 plus 14.7, right? This is on the time two, so we should discount this one by 1 plus r squared, right? And the r is our discount rate, it's 20%, right? 20%. So it will be 1 point, what? Will be 1 plus 0.2, right? And this one will be what? Will be 0.2 also, right? So that's the price of the stock you're willing to pay, right? To get these cash flows, right? In the future. You can say after we solve the discounted value for all these cash flows, we adding them up, right? Will be total what? 13.34 dollars, right? And if you don't want to use our manual calculations, you can use our what? Multiple cash flow key on your financial calculators, right? So you can press the CF key, right? Then our, you know, CF01, right? Cash flow on time one is two, right? CO2 equal to what? 
uh, 16.8 dollars, right? F01 equal to 1, F02 equal to 1, right? Then you see our discount rate is what? 20%. I equal to, you know, 20, right? And then you solve the PV, right? MPV, right? Compute, right? So press MPV first, right? Then input 20 as discount rate, right? Then you solve what? You solve it right, by price sensitivity. You can also solve the same answer right, like we show in this uh, slide. Right, so let's follow two period models. Right, the difference compared with the first examples. Right, we extending the holding period for one more period for one more year, right? So you can receive another dividend, right? And also sell the stock for a different price. So what's the pattern we observe from these two examples, right? We always value a share of stock by bringing back all expected future dividends into, what? into the present values, right? That's our patterns. So the key is to determine the future dividends, right? Then we will, based on the future dividends, we will do somewhat PV calculations by use our discounted, you know, factors by discounting factors, right? So there are three cases, right, to solve this uh, stock price, right, based on the three different assumptions right the first one we're assuming you know there's no growth of what dividends right second we assuming the dividends is growing with what with the fixed rate or you can say the constant rate the last one we assuming the company has our what unusual growth rate right so maybe they have a slow growth rate at the beginning for dividends, right? Then they have a higher growth rate of dividends. Then they will keep a you know fixed growth rate, right, for the remaining times. So let's say a detail for each case, right, for each assumptions. The first one we assuming there's no what, no growth of what, a dividend. Right? What's the meaning of uh, zero growth? Means the dividends are what? The dividend are constant, right? Or you can say are fixed, right? Are fixed. Same amount of what? Dividend, right? If the dividends are same or for all the time, Right, we call this one as what? Has a preferred stock, right? Preferred stock pays, paid a what? Paid a fixed dividend, right? And we know if we have a fixed dividend or fixed payment each year, right? We call this one as a what? Perpetuity, right? Perpetuity. So perpetuity, right, means we have the same payment make what? Permanently, right? Permanently, right? Perpetuities, right? You can say that's a uh, perpetuities calculations, right? So the P, the price equal to the fixed payment over what? Over discount rate, right? And in our preferred stock, right? We pay the same what? Same dividend every year, right? So the formula will be the price equal to D over R, right? D is the fixed payments of the dividends for the paper stock. R is the what? Annual, right? Annual discount rate or annual required rate of return, right? For holding the paper stock. The next one we will study is for what? For the constant growth rate of dividends. 
right? So our dividends is growing with our what? With our constant rate. Okay? Be careful with the difference of these two cases, right? The first case, there's no growth, right? But for this case, the growth is what? The growth is fixed, right? So we will use the G, right? G represent what? Growth rate, right? So G is the notation for growth rate, right? So in the first scenario, right, the G is equal to zero, right? But in the second case, G is a number, right? The number is, is fixed, right? For the dividend growth, you know, model, right? Dividend growth model. So you can see our patterns, right? You can see here, right? So in the first first year, right, you got a what? You got a dividend, for example, D0, right? Now in the next time, the next year, right? So let's put the cash flow diagram here, right? On time zero, you receive the D0 as dividend, right? The time one will be D1, right? Time two will be D2, right? Time three will be D3, right? So this dividend is growing with a fixed rate, G, right? So D1 will equal to the D0 times 1 plus G, right? D2 equal to the D1 times 1 plus G, right? Equal to what? Equal to the D2, um, D0 times 1 plus G square. Right, because we replace the D1, I right, use this one here, right? So we have the D0 times 1 plus G, right, square, right, square, right? So how about D3, right? Okay. D3 will be the same thing, right? It will be very similar, just the D0 times what? 1 plus G raised to the cubic. So you can see our dividend itself follow a compounding pattern will be the D0 times 1 plus G raised to the time T. And that's our compounding pattern of the dividend itself, right? So what's the price of a stock? What's the price of a stock? Right, let me show this one directly on this side. Right? The price of the stock must discount all the dividends to what? To a time zero, right? So we have the D zero times one plus G. That's a D one, right? D two is what? D two is a D zero times one plus G square. D three is what? D zero times 1 plus G cubic, right? And we need to discount all these dividends to what? To times zero. So we will divide by 1 plus R, 1 plus R square, right? And 1 plus R cubic. You may wonder why we don't include in the D0, right, in this equation. Because, because what? Because our valuation of the financial assets is based on what? Based on the future cash flows, right? So D0 is already, already what? Already received. It's not a future cash flows, right? So it will be not included in what? In our valuations, right? So now we can put this formula, right? Into a competitive, competitive formulas, right? Competitive formulas. Let me show this one here. Right, let me show this one here. So our P0, right, P0. Right, P0 equal to the summation, right? I equal to one to what? To N, right? So we have the D0 times what? One plus G, right? I over what? 1 plus R I, right? To be more general, right, we can use the T, 
right? T means the time, right? So T starts from zero. Oh, uh, sorry, T starts from one, right? We're not including a cash flow now, but including cash flow in the future, right? The most close ones in the time one, right? Time one toward to infinity, right? Infinity, right? Because we said we can hold in the stock forever, right? If you don't sell it, you can hold it, this one forever. So a T is from what? One to infinity, right? In one to infinity, right? So we can put the D0, right? To the outside because D0 actually included in the every term, right? This is our summations, right? I mean summation of the many different terms, right? But you know the D0 is, is actually in every term, right? So we, we can write down like this format, right? D0 times summation, right? T equal to one, right? equal to one to infinity infinity right one plus g right raised to t over one plus r raised to t right so these two can be also combined right so one plus g over one plus r raised to what t right and for this part right based on our compounding right in the Algebra, right? Operations, right? This part is what? If you raise this one to infinity, then do the summations, right? So this one can be simplified into what? Into 1 over R minus G, right? Be careful, the top also including what? 1 plus G, right? So that's our simplified, simplified or you can say compacted form of this part, right? I will not go to a detail, right? When we have this one in final, because they are including some, you know, algebra op operations, right? If you want to check the details, just Google it, right? This is the compounding, right? Terms, sum summations, right? If you simplify it, right? Raised to the infinities. Finally, it will arrive at this term. Right, so now we can write down the formula. Right, so this step to derive these formulas are not required right, for you to memorize. Right, our purpose is just to derive the formula for our constant growth dividend model. Right, so the model we will use only this formula. Right, it's the p zero equal to the d zero times one plus g over r minus g and this one equal to d1 over r minus g right so d1 is equal to r0 times 1 plus g its dividends in the next period compared with the time zero's dividend right and the bottom is what r minus g r is the recovery rate of return g be careful is the growth rate of dividend for different time right we assuming we have r fixed growth rate of dividends, right? So from the time zero to time one to time two, every year, right? Dividend is grows by what? G rate, right? G rate. So that's our formulas, right? Our formula. Be careful, right? For this formula to be valid, right? There are some requirements you must to meet, right? Now you can use this formula. First one, if the g bigger than r, right, this part will be what? Will be negative, right? So the whole value will be negative. Is anyone to pay the negative price for the stock, right? It's, it's not reasonable, right? So we cannot apply this formula if the g more than the r, be careful, right? Also, if the g equal to r, right, for the ratio, right? Or you can see the fractions, right? The bottom will be what? Will be zero, right? The den if denominator is, is zero, right? The whole fraction will be not meaningful, right? So we can also not apply this formula if the g equal to r. And also be careful if the r very close to the g, right? Even r may be 
bigger energy, but they are very close. Okay, so it will be becomes our it will become a very tiny numbers. Okay, then the inverse of a tiny numbers will be our what? Very huge numbers, right? But did you see any stock on the market? You will pay more than one million dollars for a share, right? It's, it's impossible, right? So indeed, right, the R can be not even close to a G. Right, so first R must bigger than the G, right? And R cannot close to the G. Right, so that's the requirements for you to apply right, this formula. And also our stock with our with our constant growth rate. That's also very important right, assumptions right, to apply this formula. Right? Even this formula is very easy to use, right? But doesn't mean this formula is, is perfect, right? There are so strong assumptions, right? If you don't have these assumptions to meet, right, you cannot, right, you cannot use this formula, right? And this formula has a famous name called called dividend growth model, right? We will use this model a lot, right, to evaluate a stock, right? So let me give you uh, examples, right? For example. Suppose the big D in corporations just paid a dividend. Be careful, just paid means the dividends received on what? Time zero, right? That will be D zero. D zero equal to what? Point five dollars per share. And we know our dividends will keep growing right, with a fixed rate, 2% every year. So G equal to what? 2%. Okay? And our market require, requires what? A return for 15% for this asset with the same risk. Right? So if you don't put the money into the big disk incorporation stock, you can get a same return with the same risk right? from the other assets for what? 15%. Right? So this is your cost. That's your required rate of return, right? To compensate your risk investing in this stock, right? So your return, right, of discount rate will be equal to 15%. Okay. Now we can plug these numbers into our formula to solve the price you're willing to pay the stock, right? Or you can see how much the stock should be selling for. So the P0 equal to our formula of dividend growth model, right? Equal to the D0 times 1 plus g over r minus g that's our formula right so we can plug these numbers into the formula now right d0 equal to what 0.5 dollars right our growth rate two percent right i equal to 15 percent right 15 minus what two percent right so that's our formula you plug these numbers you can solve the price you're willing to pay the stock right it should be equal to what 3.92 dollars right that's a that's a fair price right that's the fair price you're willing to pay right the company willing to sell on the market right be careful pay attention to the word in the province right if i imagine the pay dividend just paid that will be diesel but if i imagine dividend will be paid in one year right then it will be d1 right so it will use a different format of this formula right? so pay attention to the word when the dividends paid is just paid or it will be paid in the next period right? we will adopt different version of this formula okay let's say one more question right suppose the corporation is starting to pay two dollars dividend in one year right in one year be careful in one year means this is our what it's not d0 but what d1 d1 equal to the two dollars right per per share and the growth rate of dividends is equal to the five percent require rate of return equal to the twenty percent right so what's the price price is the p0 p0 equal to the D1, or you can see D0 times 1 plus G, 
over r minus g. But you know that d0 times 1 plus g just equal to what? d1, right? d1 over what? r minus g, right? So the d1 equal to what? $2, right? r is required of return, 20%, right? g is the growth rate, 5%, right? So the 2 over what? 15%, right? That's the price you're willing to pay. So 2 over what? 0.15. So 2 over 0 0.15 right, equal to $13.34, right? That's how much you're willing to pay for the stock. That's also a price the company willing to sell. And so that's called uh, the fair price, right? Based on the dividend you will pay, right, in the future. That's the fair price you're willing to pay, right? $13.34. Be careful, compare with the previous questions, right, last questions, right, here we actually saw the word dividends will be paid, not just paid, right, in the next period, right, so this is a D1, not D0, right, okay, so that's for this part of the chapter 8, right, we will continue to study this chapter with more details, right, so let's check the second videos.